While finishing up my unpolished reflection on abortion and euthanasia, I began reading a collection of the Marquis de Sade's work. In my reflection, I poorly explained that while I may be burying myself alive under the crushing weight of debt and discrimination, and that my true preferences would be to die or to withdraw entirely from society to spare the world my toxicity, I do feel an obligation to find ways to share with the world as long as I choose to be a part of it. I have adapted one of Saad's philosophical dialogues, uh, his 1782 dialogue between a priest and a dying man into a 24-minute monologue, the editors of The Marquis de Sade, Justine, Philosophy in the Bedroom, and other writings consider this to be one of his tamest works. I struggle severely with memorization and with staging my space for skit filming um, on any reasonable timeline, so I will read. Um, I'm also a technophile currently quite creeped out by technology due to some personal experiences that compound the general tech gets creepier as we age trend. Between that and working with old technology under frustrating constraints, I am choosing again to deliver this piece underprepared and unnecessarily divided into parts. Part two of three. <clears throat> Tis a mechanical operation, perhaps as simple as the working of electricity but which we are unable to understand yet. Need I bother more about it? When you have roofed everything over with your God, will I be any the better off? And shall I still not have to make an effort at least as great to understand the artisan as to define his handiwork? By edifying your chimera, it is thus no service you have rendered me. You have made me uneasy in my mind, but you have not enlightened it. And instead of gratitude, I owe you resentment. Your God is a machine you fabricated in your passion's behalf. You manipulated it to their liking. <clears throat> but the day it interfered with mine, I kicked it out of my way. Deem it fitting that I did so. And now, at this moment, when I sink and my soul stands in need of calm and philosophy, Belabor it not with your riddles and your cant, which alarm but will not convince it, which will irritate without improving it. And that's where I actually had um, intended to end part one, but uh, my timing was inaccurate. <clears throat> Sorry for that fourth wall break. Good friends, and on the best of terms we have ever been, this soul and I, so nature wished it to be. As it is, so she expressly modeled it, for my soul is the result of, disp of the dispositions she formed in me, pursuant to her own ends and needs. And as she has an equal need of vices and virtues, whenever she was pleased to move me to evil, she did so. Whenever she wanted a good deed from me, she roused in me the desire to perform one. And even so, I did as I was bid. Look nowhere but to her workings for the unique cause of our fickle human behavior, and in her laws, hope to find no other springs than her will and her requirement. It is then possible that things necessarily come about without being determined by a superior intelligence, and possible hence that everything derive logically from a primary cause without there being either reason or wisdom in that primary cause. The world and all therein may be what it is and as you see it to be without any wise and reasoning cause directing it. And natural effects must have natural causes. Natural causes sufficing, there is no need to invent any unnatural ones, as your God, who himself, as I have told you already, would require to be explained and who would at the same time be the explanation of nothing. Hmm. 
and that once tis plain your God is superfluous, he is perfectly useless, and that what is useless would greatly appear to be imaginary only, null and therefore non-existent, thus to conclude that your God is a fiction, I need no other argument than that which furnishes me the certitude of his inutility. True. Oh, oops, I cut that part. Nothing so much amuses me as this sign of the extent to which human beings have been carried away by fanaticism and stupidity. Although the prodigious spectacle of folly we are facing here may be horrible, oh, yeah, it is always interesting. Answer me honestly and endeavor to set personal considerations aside. Were I weak enough to fall victim to your silly theories concerning the fabulous existence of the being who renders religion necessary, under what form would you advise me to worship? Would you have me adopt the daydreams of Confucius rather than the absurdities of Brahma? Should I kneel before the great snake to which the black people pray? Invoke the Peruvian sun, or Moses, Lord of hosts? To which Mohammedan sect shall I pray? Oh, shall, should I rally? Or which Christian heresy would be preferable in your view? Be careful how you reply. Friend, twas egoistical his reply. I wonder how the one or the other of us can have much love for himself to deign to listen to such degrading nonsense. Ugh. He who sees in a divine redeemer anything else than the most vulgar of all tricksters and the most errant of all, all impostors is mistaken. No, my friend, I said to him. All is peace and quiet around us. No wrath thunders forth. <sighs> because your God, be it from impotence or from reason or from whatever you please, is a being whose existence I shall momentarily concede out of condescension for you. <laughs> or, if you prefer, in order to accommodate myself to your sorry little perspective. Because this God, I say, were he to exist, as you are mad enough to believe, could not have selected as means to persuade us anything more ridiculous than those your Jesus incarnates. How long as I abide by the rules of logic, how, <clears throat> sorry, how so long as I abide by the rules of logic, how would you have me accept as proof anything which is lacking proof? Before a prophecy could constitute proof, I should first have to be completely certain it was ever pronounced. The prophecies history tells us of belong to history, and for me, they can have only the force of other historical facts, whereof three out of four are exceedingly dubious. If, to add... If to this I add the strong probability that they have been transmitted to us by not very objective historians who recorded what they preferred to have us read, I shall be quite within my rights if I am skeptical. And furthermore, who is there to assure me that this prophecy was not made after the fact, that it was not a stratagem of everyday political scheming, like that which predicts a happy reign under a just king, or frost in winter time. As for your miracles, I am not any readier to be taken in by such rubbish. All rascals have performed them, all fools have believed in them. Before I'd be persuaded of the, of the truth of a miracle, I would have to be very sure the event so called by you was absolutely contrary to the laws of nature. For only what is outside of nature can pass for miraculous. And who is so deeply learned in nature that he can affirm the precise point where her domain ends and the precise point 
where it is infringed upon.